Hello and welcome back to What the Fuck Lorosis. I'm still Kevin, you're still you. This episode is called Now is the Winter of Our Shoulder Bent. Hey, I got a thing here. If you enjoy this show, would you please share the show with five people you think are cool? Would you consider rating the show, following or subscribing the show? I would really appreciate it. I want to expand the reach of the show. I've had the privilege of hearing from a lot of folks who have found the show very helpful. And one has the sense we don't always know what's going on with people, even people close to us. We might not know everything they're going through. And it would be cool if this show could be of use to um, as many people as possible. So this episode, I, in listening to it, okay, visually, there's nothing you're missing. My clothes aren't that interesting. I just hold up the title on a post-it at the beginning. But in re-listening to it, I have to say, structurally, I'm really proud of how this turned out. I, I plan these beats and um, I do it on the fly. It's all in one take. And um, I love how structurally uh, all these things kind of weaved together really well in this. You have 80s music references and Shakespeare references. Um, I don't know. It's kind of fun. I'm, I'm proud of it as a, as a whole piece of art that I put out there and that's pleasant. The unpleasant part is the the impetus for this episode. The the first time I saw what I looked like when I walk um, and was horrified, I remember I was in a Walgreens uh, heading to the back of the store towards the pharmacy and they have these security mirrors in the back of the store that are angled down so that on one end of the store you can look in the mirrors and you can see you know it allows them to see what's going on in the aisles and I looked up and caught myself walking I could see the image of my whole body walking this was even before I had a cane and in my head, my walk seemed almost normal. And um, wow, I looked up and it was horrifying. And I, after this incident happened that I talk about in the episode, I was more and more aware of this hideous silhouette that I projected as I was walking. Um, and it was really uncomfortable and um, <clears throat> hard to grasp. Whoa, this is a new normal. I, I can't fix this and the trend is probably not going to get better from here. Um, and so this episode was a way to talk about that and not just have that be inside my own head and to try to have some fun with that really heavy shit I just shared. Um, this episode is called Now is the Winter of Our Shoulder Bent, and I hope you enjoy it. In January, I comically fell and tragically broke my right shoulder. Um, PLS has significantly limited both the legs and my left arm, and my best limb was my right arm. The fall was so ridiculous, I stepped on a Duplo, which is like a big Lego. I saw them in front of me, and I responsibly 
tried to slowly move out of the space with the Duplos, not knowing there was actually one right behind me. I stepped on the Duplo, the lightning through the leg, two awkward steps to the right, and I start to go. There's a wall. I think I'm going... <laughs> I think I'm going to put my hand out and stop the entire weight of my body falling with just my right arm and the torque on the shoulder. <sighs> I fall down. It starts shaking. It's bad. It's broken. And it started this very, very challenging cascade of um, days and months. Um, the number of limitations I would experience every day not being able to use this, it was high. And every time I hit one of those limitations, I would hear, <laughs> I would hear this song in my head, this line from a song by this singer, Peter Cetera. If you don't know his name, you know his voice. I'm so jealous of him. He has a voice that's so instantly recognizable. Two words and you know that is that guy. It sounds like a warm brass instrument. Nobody sounds like him. He was the bass player and one of the singers in a band called Chicago and uh, was with them for 17 albums. And the last album, they had a big two-hour meeting about the title and they ended with Chicago 17 was the name of that album. Came out in 84, but I don't have to tell you that. And there was the song Hard Habit to Break. Um, and there was a line in that song that would go through my head every time one of these limitations happened. Don't know what you got until it's gone. I would try to do my Peter Cetera impression for you. I don't sing as well anymore, but I heard it so many times a day. He was with me. Thank you, Peter. Um... It was a really, really hard several months. I think I was, I'm sure I was very unpleasant to live with. I'm already experiencing so much loss. The year prior, I lost so much physical functioning and I was still able to take care of the kids. And breaking my shoulder meant we had to change to finding, we had to find sort of round the clock daycare so that my wife could work. I love putting my littlest to, to bed and it was so hard. Um, I would experience a lot of pain. I figured out a way I could do it and told myself, I don't think I'm re-injuring doing this, getting her from the chair into the crib. I just couldn't let go of being able to do that. Um, but every time I fell after that, I would use my arms to try to stop myself and would re-aggravate the injury. I went back for x-rays on the right and the left several times thinking, shit, I broke, I broke something again. I know it. Um, I did four weeks of ortho PT to try to rehab this. It was supposed to be eight, and I just couldn't take it anymore. I've been to so many doctor's offices, and people are afraid to work on me and work with me. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot if you're not used to a patient like this, the way my limbs respond is weird and I think people felt afraid they were gonna do something to hurt me and they would just feel like okay uh let's be real gentle here and it was hard 
feeling, um, it was hard feeling like, gosh, you're, you're actually afraid to work with me. Um, similar to the feeling people, I would get from people who would just see me walking in a store. You see it um, in their face and in their body, like taking it all in. And it's kind of upsetting. And um, one of the things I did to heal was uh, I got a, an ice pack that's designed to sort of strap on your shoulder and a compression shirt that's specifically designed to compress shoulders for injury recovery. And I would walk around with this compression shirt and a ice pack under the shoulder looking like a hunchback. Um, I did not seduce anyone over the corpse of someone I killed, like Richard III, but experiencing this over the last 18 months and experiencing the extra pain and the uncomfortable gazes from people looking at my shape as I'm walking made me think like, I don't think I'm going to kill somebody and then seduce somebody in their family over the corpse, but I sort of understand it a little more now. Like, this feels horrible. This is so much grief and so much loss and so much physical pain and so much inadequacy. Every fucking day I would run into something that I couldn't do to help the family that I used to be able to do. And that was really hard. Um, I'm lucky to have a very, very good therapist and I talk to her every week and um, it's been another thing that's helped me be able to work through some of this stuff. And I think her naming grief and loss helped me just to know that was one of the things I was experiencing. At the end of the song, Hard Habit to Break, um, he has the line, um, this is so manipulative that I'm sharing this, but it was, it was in my head. It's fair, because it was fucking in my head. He says, I'm not going to cry. He says, and it's not at all a metaphor for like my whole body and not just my shoulder. He says, being without you takes a lot of getting used to. You learned... Now the fucking thing is happening. You learn to live with it. But I don't want to. That was What the Fuck Lerosis. Now is the winter of our shoulder bent. I can't believe you made it this far. Thank you so much for listening. High five. Hey, did you enjoy this show? If you did, if you did, I would love you to share it with five people you think are cool. I would love you to rate it and follow it or subscribe it, review it. Um, that would be awesome. If you didn't enjoy this show, here's what I'd like to say. Think about how much it annoyed you or disappointed you or bored you or was kind of eh. And think of five people who do that to you in your life and send it to those five people. And the, here's the code. You just say, I thought you would appreciate this. And in your mind, you're like, because you're as boring as this fucking show was. But they'll be like, hey, thanks. And it'll be their groove because because, right, you know the, the show, you know them. Look, everybody wins. Thanks again for listening. And um, this was a great take. <laughs> Kevin, what a pathetic take. It's still, it's still a keeper, though. We're keeping it. There was some gold in there. We're going to keep it.